Temporary Australians is proudly brought to you by Harley-Davidson Australia, Fraser Motorcycles, Brotherhood CMC, Victory Motorcycles, the Australian Motorcycle Expo, Oztrikes and Think Right. I'm Jonesy and I'm Hirsty. This is Temporary Australians and what a great night it is to be out, Greg. It is and there's a lot of girls who are learning to ride here, mate. Oh, is this why you're here, you sly dog? No, I think it's why you and Angry Anderson here, pal. I'm happily married. Where's Angry? He's already gone in the building. We're going to find out what's going on. This is what else is coming up on the show. We discover just how popular trikes have become. We uncover some secret women's business. Wayne Shepherd from CMA in South Australia explains how to ride with purpose. We find some Indians on the loose. Ray Robinson fills us in on the blue liners. Jonesy takes a chook chaser for a ride. We check out popular biker band Black Label and we find out what a dream trike is like to ride. They're big, they're bold and they're beautiful. And you see them all over the country. Three-wheeled motorcycles or trucks are really popular these days and we thought we'd pay a visit to Oz Trikes at Summersby on the central coast of New South Wales. Trikes around Australia, they seem to be on the rise. Yeah, there's definitely more people getting involved. They're all catching on and finding out how good it is in uh, sitting back, relax and enjoy the scenery from a comfortable seat of a trike. How different is it riding a trike to a uh, normal two-wheel? You, you can relax a bit more, take your eyes off the road, look at the scenery. You don't have the worries off the bike in potholes, gravels, those kind of hazards. And uh, you basically just um, sit back, enjoy the scenery, enjoy the cruise. Tell us about Oztrike. We started in... Um, uh, 96, 97, as it is with, uh, you know, uh, a, a few trikes and, you know, as the demand rose, um, have, have uh, developed and you're driven by the market and uh, the market just got bigger and bigger and more demand, so you got to give people what they want. What do they want in terms of a trike? Everybody's different. There's none, no, no trike is in the same in its finish. Everybody likes to give it their own little touch if it's colour or you know, mirrors or, you know, little trinkets and accessories. But uh, anybody who is thinking about getting involved or doing it, i got to warn them, uh, it, it is addictive and you may never want to go back on two wheels. It's, uh, it's just the fun fact is it's hard to describe how good and how nice a trike is. Why don't you have a go? Yeah, and where's the clutch and the brakes? What are you doing? You're not on a bike. <laughs> it's a trike. So forget about bike. All right, tell me about it. You drive a manual car? I do. What do you do in the manual car? Well, Left foot clutch? Yeah. Yep. Right foot brake. So, and then you got a left hand gear change. Driving, riding a manual car with handlebars. That's that's the skill it requires. You don't need any leaning skills. You don't need any, any bike skills. You just sit there, relax and it helps if, if you know how to ride a bike because you've got a hand throttle. I'm ready, let's go. Sounds like it's a lot of fun. Uh, is it just a party or do you got more to it? 
it is a big party actually, but there is a lot more to it. We have a lot of in uh, in depth educational items for the ladies to learn. Uh, it's a night where they can get away from the guys and really come in and ask the questions that they want to know. Surely they wouldn't want to get away from us all the time. Not all the time, but sometimes you just got to ask those questions that you don't want to say around the guys. <laughs> are we dealing with girls' secret business? I don't know. Something like that, a little secret society action going on in here. <laughs> I just always am a pillion, sit on the back of my husband's bike, and I'd like to be able to ride, but I need the courage. I need that push. What do you have them do? Uh, we educate them a little bit on uh, the actual riding apparel. We teach them what the, uh, what the importance of actual riding gear is. We show them all the different models of motorcycles that are available from Harley-Davidson and how they actually can customize the bikes to fit them rather than fitting the bike to themselves. I learned that all the bikes can be custom made to uh, whatever your preference is. So for little short people like me, can bring, bring the pegs forward and different handlebars and even lower the bike so that, you know, it fits and feels right. We also go through a um, uh, learn how to pick up a motorcycle that's downed. Uh, it gives you a little bit of a confidence boost, letting you know that you can pick up that big motorcycle. When you think about the size of a bike, um, it's just enormous. And uh, we actually um, had a go at picking up a 330 kilo bike and yeah, pretty much everyone, you know, was able to do it. We also go through uh, what we call the fit shop, which shows you how you can accessorize the bikes and give them a little bit more of a custom look. And then they'll also do the jump start, which actually lets them get on a bike on a machine that lets them ride through the gears and feel what it actually feels like to have an engine between the legs. It's always great to run into some people that are discovering motorcycles for the first time. Sandra, you are one of those people. I sure am. You've never ridden before? Never ridden a bike before. What if I said to you, Sandra, I could teach you to ride a bike? I could be like some sort of Svengali. Really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> without all the weird stuff. Okay. I could teach you to ride a bike right now, a Harley Davidson bike right now. Okay, done. That's it. Okay, okay, change gears. No, no, it's okay. It's not our gearbox, it's okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know, it's got a bit of vibrations, hasn't it? Yeah, big time. <laughs> That's the most powerful thing I've had between my legs for a long time. <laughs> there you go. Another devotee. Thank you. What sort of feedback do you get from the girls with this sort of night? Oh, it's wonderful, wonderful feedback. They love it. They love all the information they get. It gives them a lot more confidence and uh, they're eager to get on the road. One of the initiatives that have come out of South Australia has been a little Gospel of Mark put out by CMA South Australia and the Bible Society, which has been given out to tens of thousands of bikers around Australia. It has, Greg, yeah. We've, uh, we ordered about 30,000 of these. In, uh, about eight years ago and just about all of them have gone. The front cover of the book is uh, 1996 Toy Run in Adelaide. Specifically we got this organised to give out at the Toy Run because there's close to 15,000 motorcyclists there at the Oval so we thought great opportunity. And it seems like a lot of people trying to figure out the God stuff but they do it on the quiet so something like this they can just put in their pocket and no one needs to know. It's just the right size isn't it? And now Wayne CMA is helping the MRA Toy Run this year. Yeah, the MRA do a magnificent job putting on this toy run. Uh, it's no question the best in Australia, uh, but it's a lot of work. And uh, so a lot of different groups assist and help wherever possible. And so we've had a history over the last probably five, six years particularly of, uh, of making an effort to be there on the Saturday to assist and uh, support in other ways we can. Well, I'm sure that they appreciate all the volunteers they can get with such a big run. Mate, a lot of motorcycles, especially if the weather is good, uh, could be 15,000 or more. But the actual uh, marshalling is pretty important uh, just to keep uh, things safe, uh, both at uh, Victoria Park where we start and uh, on the way and, of course, at Cullington. I just think in South Australia it's a day when we're all one and uh, of one purpose, and uh, which, which is really good. I don't know much about Indians. I like Indian food and there was one of the village people, oh yeah, and they made a motorcycle, a very successful one of motorcycles, from 1901 up to the 50s, and then poof, they just stopped. What happened to the Indian? So Pete, what happened to the Indian? Well, Indian is a great brand, of course, started way back in 1901. Uh, it's the oldest American brand. 
They had uh, great success. They were the number one American motorcycle manufacturer, maybe even the world's largest motorcycle manufacturer for a number of years. But slowly but surely, I think commercial reality and uh, uh, who knows what else happened, and um, they petered out, and by 1950, the early 50s, they were gone. We purchased the Indian Motorcycle Company 18 months, two years ago now, and have been working hard at uh, what the future of Indian will be. But will old-time enthusiasts embrace the Indian? I don't know. Looking at your shirt, Rob, it doesn't look like you're ready to embrace the new Indian. No, I think over the, over the years we've seen um, the name go on a variety of different motorcycles, and. Uh, Victory really will have to prove the, that they're capable of doing it properly. But if someone said to you, here's a new Indian, Rob, just take it, you, would you take it? Well, you'd certainly, you'd certainly go and have a play with it and see what it was like. When it's, uh, you, you can't really have an opinion if you've not uh, had a go at it. There is an existing Indian we have continued in the North American market to produce that motorcycle, whilst we're beavering away in the background to build our own version of the Indian. Gee, next you'll be saying they'll be making the CX500 Honda again. Don't do that to us. No one wants that. How long have you been riding? Always. Since I was about uh, 12, I think I got my first Vespa. Uh, I remember um, the tank was, um, the seat uh, was, was not the best. The petrol used to seep up under your seat and it used to creep on my backside and burn the living daylights out of me, but uh, I've had many, many motorbikes over the years. Never been without one. Well, tell us about the Blue Liners. Blue Liners started uh, in 1992. It's an Australian police and friends motorcycle club. We've got uh, well over 800 members and we've uh, given uh, probably about uh, half a million dollars away to various charities over the 20 odd years and um, that's great, we just enjoy doing it. How active are you on the riding side? Very, very active. You'd see us on the road just about every day but we have an organised uh, ride from Sydney at least once every uh, four to six weeks. I notice in America that uh, there's a number of police motorcycle groups that actually wear back patches. Has that um, caused controversy in the, the general police community? Um, I think it's uh, it's an individual thing. Um, personally, I don't wear one, um, but certainly I think as long as it's not offensive, well, it's up to the individual what he wears. The police, um, in general, uh, shouldn't be seen as uh, impersonating outlaw motorcycle gang members, and I, I firmly support that. And. Uh, um, we, uh, as a result, our club doesn't wear them. You've got the Blue Knights who wear a, uh, a shield on their back. You've got the Fire Brigade who wear the international fire uh, symbol on the back of their vests. There's also a number of others that, uh, that do wear them. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's an individual choice of uh, that particular club. The V8 engine, predominantly designed to go into a car because that's what Mr V8 thought of when he made it back in whatever, 100 years ago. He thought, I've got a V8 and I'm going to put it in a car. Did you know that some people put V8 engines in motorcycles? It's crazy. Who would do that? This is a V8 motor and it's in a motorcycle frame. Yeah, in a dirt drag frame, yeah. So dirt drag, what happens there? You line up in a foot deep of dirt with any sort of bike. It doesn't have to be a V8. V8s are unlimited class, it can be a 400cc chook chaser, modified Harley, modified Jap, and you race on lights and the first to the end wins. Right, so simple. This frame, where did that come from? Uh, we designed these frames ourselves, we're the only ones in Australia manufacturing them um, for the public, so anybody can come and buy a frame off us. So how, how many horsepower is this? Uh, this is the Boss V8 Ford motor, so it's probably going to be around 650-700 horsepower. Is that all? That's all. Are they hard to ride? Not at all. No, we build the bike straight, so they're like a 600 thumper to ride, so if you're on it and you back off, they're dead straight again. So how does one get a go on one? Well, we can go out and have a ride now. I could ride one? You, even you can ride one, yes. <laughs> Are you sure I can ride this thing? Anybody can ride it, just like a chook chaser. Like a, a chook chaser? Yeah, 600 thumper. You just get on it, rip the throttle on, and just where you go, easy as. A V8 chook chaser. 900 horsepower. And how much is it worth again? Oh, about 60 grand. Right. And if I smash it? I know you live, that's right. <laughs> okay.
did pretty good there, Jonesy. Enjoy that. I think I want one, Greg. <laughs> you done good, mate. <laughs> what? It's so quiet. How would you describe the music you play? OK, you, I wouldn't say you could pigeonhole it now, definitely not after all these years, but um, it initially started out blues-based, probably moved off that tangent now, just through the years, different players coming and going, different guitar players, but it's essentially Australian pub rock. And that's what we stick to, that's what we love, and it's, you know, as a mate of mine once said, it's Indigenous. very well known in the bike scene, you play at lots of events, uh, how did that all come about? Pretty much, yeah, no one would book the band, so the only gigs we could get were essentially biker gigs, so, um, and with the style we are playing too, as I said, blues based rock, a lot of bikers are still in the boogie, so that's what we're into and that's what we used to play and that's kind of still what we kind of do a little bit of still today. Well, obviously it's worked because you're very well accepted at motorcycle events and club events. Yeah, I think essentially, you know, you just treat them as normal people. That's how it is. There's a lot of bad publicity about it, and we've suffered accordingly just by being associated. But it has its benefits too. We had all their gear ripped off, um, and we told the cops, and they did nothing. You know, two weeks, here's an event number. And we told, I think, three outlaw clubs, and we got it back in four days. So thanks, guys. Well, obviously, they think very highly of you guys because of your long liberty in playing in their events. We just take it as it comes. A lot of my mates ride, a lot of them are in outlaw clubs anyway, so it's just sort of just seems natural to me, you know. That was so much fun. Go have a go the big one. Well, uh, I told you it's addictive, so now you know what it's all about and you you passed little school and you, you're an experienced trike rider now. You, now you can have a go on the, on the Mustang ST1. 110 horsepower, fuel injected, water cooled, five speed. So be easy on the throttle. She's a little rocket. Look, I will. Um, how different is it to ride to the one that I've just been on? There's not uh, a real comparison as such. Like uh, there, there's too many different changes on it. So. Uh, one is as brilliant as it is in, in its own, and the other one shines and, and is as brilliant as the other. It's, it's hard to explain. I give you 10 minutes on it, and we will see if, uh, yeah, if it can keep your excited, excitement down after. Mate, that was fun. Handles great, lots of power. It's just uh, incredible being so close to the road and just feeling like you can rock it ahead. And as an added bonus for an old bloke like me with crook knees, it's easy to get up. You're a grown-up uh, trike rider now. You had, a, you had a play on the on the little one and on the big one. Yeah, the Mustang was so much more fun to ride. It was, uh, besides the power, but just the lowness to the ground and the spread of the wheels, it just made me feel so safe. Yeah, it's, um, it's a combination of things. It's the, the centre of gravity. You're going from rear-mounted to middle-mounted, lower lower to the ground, and with its five-speed uh, gearbox, it, it's just smooth as anything on the open road. You can, you can sit on 120 all day, every day, and it just glides along. Look, I'm not surprised. I found the seating position and the leg rests were terrific. I could stretch out. Um, and it felt almost like a cruiser uh, riding the thing. Well, again, it's a combination. It's, um, uh, it runs stain at the comfort seat, but has extra padding in it with side support. So that, that really molds you into it. And then uh, in the way it's set up with the type of handlebars and uh, um, the controls, uh, it also caters for more for, for the taller people who sort of, you know, need a bit more room to move around. So, well, I don't want to call it the big boy strike, but uh, she, she certainly handles them all right. So, um, what are we looking at to get one on the road these days? Start in the, in the low 40s and then it goes up, uh, you know, in, in the, what package you want to run in the mid -high, higher 40s, but uh, worth every dollar and cents for how much fun you can get, uh, you know, one, once you have one. 
Well, what a night it's been. Yeah, great fun, mate, and lots of girls really seem to be getting into motorcycling these days. There's nothing more attractive than a woman on a motorcycle. <laughs> I'm not sure I can say anything that wouldn't get me into trouble at this point. Well, don't say a word, Greg. I'll just say it. And until next time, we'll see you on Temporary Australians and Shiny Side Up. See ya.